well. Yep, so of the 24 Woo. changes in patch 715, Shivana was one of them. She gained an attack damage ratio on the E and a little bit of attack damage per tick on the dragon form E. With that being said, I've watched Mike Young play this a few times in solo queue as well. So he goes Devour, even though a lot of other people will go Cinder Hulk, and just Ooh. heavily focuses the objectives. Because if you remember even a year ago when Shivana was changed to gain armor and magic resist while doing Drake and also do more damage against Drake, yeah. you kill it really, really fast. Uh, with that, he tries to snowball, and he is a good ganker for lanes with CC. A tough champion to play, though. He is highly kiteable, which is why we Absolutely. normally don't see him in pro play. Was it that maybe been since West Rice? Oh, man. <laughs> yeah, West Rice, Shivana of Montage, if you want to go look that one up. Locking but... it in first. Shivana of the Summer locked in by Mike Young to put aggression back in his hands in a bit of the tanky meta. Hashtag TSM win, hashtag P1 win. We're going to see what happens coming into this game. Both teams have switched it up highly in the pick and ban phase. Let's see how they come out and who can come out on top. Oh, yeah. So excited to see the Shivana. Trying to run straight at people. Never want to pick that champion early. So that's where the value of the Maokai flex pick comes in because you can wait and see if you think you're comfortable in that scenario. P1 had a lot of different options towards the end of that draft. And they're going for the home run here. Mike Young, Shivana. Let's see where they decide to head. Have you played Shivana lately? Played it yesterday. Well, if that's lately. There you uh, go. Yeah, so Welcome I tried the Mike Young build, which would be the Devour to Frozen Mallet. A lot of people like going early Tiamat mm -hmm. on him as well for wave clear, or they like going uh, Chilling Smite. The problem with Chilling Smite in pro play is you just need the, the wards so much that I think that's what Mike's going to end up going is Tracker's Knife. Uh, and then he needs the Frozen Mallet to stick close to people. Early jungle invades already. Get that burnout damage in. Swing and a miss. Here we go, though. Looking to actually hit that one over on oh. the arrow. That's going to be a kill. It's going to go oh. down. One last shot. Ryu coming in with the go, the heal and the flash. Both summoners down. Sven Scarin, they're looking to pop the passive, but they do not get it. We talked about this, chat. What are those flashes going to mean, though? Yeah, exactly. Shivana's early gank is a little underwhelming. She runs at you slightly faster than normal. <laughs> But Let's see this again. Hanser is through a ward, but they're trying to power invade right here, not wanting Shivana to get an early start. Hanser wards, but then the roam just comes up from the river. So this is actually Phoenix One being in a defensive line formation and actually collapsing five people up through mid lane. So the stun misses on Biofrost towards X Special, which allows him to flash play. They then burn flash and heal. So six summoner spells in total for one on TSM's side. Sorry, four summoner spells in total. Six for the game, because top two flashes burned over on TSM's side. Uh, but first blood for Ryu. If they can make it way. to like five and a half, 545, then they have all, basically all of those back up. So it's gonna have to be fast moves by Spence Karen if he does want to punish that. A bit of back and forth as Biofrost stays toe to toe with Arrow focusing only the bot lane ADC. Yeah, needing to play this one aggressive because they're actually out of flash, and Mike Young immediately going into counter jungle mode. This could end up working against Van Scaren, who's Zach's nerfs slowed down his clear speed. He lost a lot of early damage on his W, so he's slow moving through the jungle here. Mike had a ward yeah. on blue, will hit level three, and now Mike camp a brush or is hoping that he... All right, they just saw each other, so now they're gonna run away and they kind of know what's happened. Just short, should miss on the Q. Bjerk's are not in a real position to come up, but Mikey Young, much more uh, comfortable in this situation. This is what we saw him doing as he came into the LCS and the tank meta. Kind of slowed him down in his, in his role to counter and be aggressive. Yeah, this is his kind of champion, if that makes sense. Yeah. Hard farming uh, carry style who needs his lanes to set up for him rather than him setting up for lanes. Interesting here how he's opted to actually skip his red almost thinking they were going to get invaded. And Zig doesn't have lane priority, so he would have been pushed off that red buff. Goes blue to blue. Hmm. So not actually getting a huge lead on Spence Garen because of this. Oh, Zach. Always so fun. 
Yes, Bjergsen as well, grinning the Scryer's Bloom, so they can't figure out if Svenskeren is up there any quicker. All the little things DSM is trying to do now to make sure they can track out where Mike Young is. They can shut down this early Shivana. He does have decent gank pressure towards that top side with Maokai. He gets some stuff going down in the bot lane with Hook and that stand aside from Draven. Mid lane might be difficult though. Not too much crowd control. Yeah, you can see the double daggers coming in, so most likely going uh -huh. towards that devour jungle enchantment. Oh, the sapling's gonna show exactly what Svenskeren has done. So make sure know his jungle is warded now. And then while all that jungle stuff is going on, the lanes are still playing. They're basically just in isolation since the junglers have been uh, scouted out so well. Allowing this Draven to try and bully, but... Also remember, Tarek stun does 100 damage at rank 1. Misses, though. Shield out. They're gonna wait for the flay back. Now they have the hook on a slow. Actually, they get his flash. Too many minions in the way, though. They gotta be really careful about hitting this one. They don't get caught up too much. Double lift is able to just dance around. Flashes and heals blown. Like the, as well as the ignite from Expecial. Yeah. Big cost there mm -hmm. for the missed stun. Double if did have to flash and heal just to keep his support alive. Expecial getting some nice efficiency out of that ignite as soon as it's back up after first blood uses it again in lane. Arrow and Expecial trying to do work with this Draven as Mike Young now starts cycling Sven's Karen's jungle. It's gotta feel pretty good when you have just about everything. Usually it's the Raptors, but he's saying, you know what? You go for Raptors. I'll take your Wolves and Grom every time. And the speed of Burnout kind of makes it possible, especially Devour. You crush those things that usually take a bit of time in the early game. And now Zigbacks, 43 to 40, pretty even top lane here. Monster didn't even really have to eat all the potions up because Cho'Gath. Yeah, Cho'Gath, a solid laner, especially if he's not ganked, he'll be able to farm up huge. Probably just end up feasting minions up until six stacks before he starts joining team fights. Fairly non-interactive top lane, oh. unless we see the Shivana try and gank. Little buys and rebuys on Mike Young. Mistake purchases, they happen. The undo button is a great thing. Yeah, thank goodness. That special, is the game. Yeah, <laughs> special push back a bit. Mismatch on the backs here, but it doesn't look like he'll actually lose too much. Just a bit of HP, and Mike Young will still be on the bot side. There will be counter jungling to happen. Knows they're out of summoners, but special is so nice. Woo! That was super close. Blowing the flash. Gets back for his coin, cash, and he's gonna get to safety. So it looks like they're actually sharing the jungles, but they're sharing the same side. You see it's opposite <laughs> sides of this jungle. It's very interesting. Yeah, they're cycling each other's jungle. I'm wondering who's gonna break the pattern first. Uh, even though Svenskeren has more CS, it's just based on yeah. the camps they've been taking. He's been counter jungling Krugs, which is much more CS than a Gromp or a Wolf mm. camp. I'm wondering when Mike's going to start turning towards the Drake. That's what Expecial was trying to set up with that uh, trade he just did. Here, Mike actually got out jungled a little bit by Svenskeren because he wasn't expecting uh, Svenskeren to cycle and ends up walking through a bunch of wards. This gives a ton of information over to CSM. Yeah, it's rinse and repeat as well. You remember last game, Svensk Garen got that tracker, immediately placed the same wards on the bottom side of blue. Now he does it top side red. And TSM can use that same advantage they did here in the, in the mid game. A few more kills over to the side of TSM at this point last game. So P1 having a much better early game. Yeah, TSM has such good vision scouting right here. Uh, Mike's gonna try and steal this anyway. <laughs> Doesn't get it. Great take back by Svenskeren right there. Mike smoked early, and then Svenskeren landed on it. What's up? I thought we were gonna have a rotation from Haunts or Zig. Didn't even need to come down for the moment. Mike Young just gets himself to safety. Looks like he's actually staying for a bit, though, to get Scuttle. Maybe head towards that top side for a bit of pressure. Well, there you go. Oh my goodness, and so fitting, two years ago there, High just coming back into the jungle, pulls out Shivana. If Phoenix won, you can win a few games in the last week, they would try and make it to the regional qualifier. So almost similarly desperate positions these teams are in to break up track. I see what they were doing. 
looked like they were able to actually use it. Double lift hitting six. Biofrost wasn't just there yet, and they figured they can get in and... Man, so much counter jungling going on in this game. Like, ships in the night, both Sven Skarin yep. and Mike Young, just going right past each other. But here's the thing. Sven Skarin's getting deep wards every time he does it. Mike Young isn't, because he's trying to rush Devourer. So uh, that would technically, uh, you would yep. think, favor TSM, but they're not necessarily winning the lanes with that vision control, because Phoenix One drafted quite strong laners. And the first blood for me really helped him out against Bjergsen. TP back to the top side for Hauntzer. Zig will back and do the same. Mike Young kicks his first red up. Very nice for him to re-control the top side of the jungle. Hopefully now they can control really what would be blue and that dragon side so Ryu can keep up on this Corky and keep up with Bjergsen in that mid lane. 87 to 95, not too bad between those two to start things off. Looks like a lot of stacking though. Catalyst's tears on the side of TSM here, so they're happy to just farm it up. Yeah, Cassiopeia, really high mana cost, great base damages. Still like that build from Bjergsen. And we know with the Taric as well, as the Cho'Gath, TSM is okay farming this one out for late game. Just a matter of preventing that Draven Snowball. Always have to track the Adoration stacks. Uh, 240 gold if Arrow were to convert that now. Maybe that's not, why they're not going down there. <laughs> One thing, bring a fight bot lane, cash in the Draven. Big mistake. Devourer, as you said, finished up. We'll see where he... Yep. That's well, gonna be the dragon, maybe, no? Yeah, he's got a control ward. Yeah. So he wants to take Drake. You would think. Unless the Cloud Drake is irrelevant for them, they might dive bot. Make sure this doesn't work against them. Biofrost and double lift looking to at least save a bit of their summoners here. If they're a resulting fight, you can see Bastion replaced there on double lift. Very poor use of the control ward uh, by Mike Young placing it over the wall and then having both trinkets as well used and immediately swept out by the rank one trinket from Biofrost. The vision game is really in the favor of TSM, but that doesn't actually mean that they are winning yet. Hard to dive on Maokai, here we go. Ramble smash back, could be second kill coming into the game. Zig gets himself under turret, it's gonna make it a lot harder as well as he's healing with that passive. Hauntzer and Sven Skarin just spit out spells around him. Yeah, Cloud Drag goes over to Shivana. They're gonna do round two. Has Flash Snowball <laughs> this time. But he's almost back at full health and his grasp will be back up. So, two. very hard like, to do. Grab a sack mid. Bring a third! Turn your back to the Cassiopeia. Don't look into her eyes. Oh, he did it! But he's still gonna go down. Nicely played by Zig in that situation. Three's a crowd though. Cannot stop himself from going down. And they'll keep that turret pushed up. Bot lane's still getting hit, but here by Arrow and X Special, and they force double lift about Frost off. Yeah, and that was a lot of time where Sven Skarin wasn't farming to try and keep up with that Shivana. So now 500 gold down on Mike Young, just the pace that Shivana can keep up yeah. in the jungle. Also, Hauntzer unable to get the execute with his feast there onto Zig. Zig healed up with his passive by getting an auto attack off right as Hauntzer was nomming down. So the kill goes over to Bjerg. Still want to kill on Cassiopeia, yeah. but Shogath wants it too. He wants blood, to get big. The Bloodthirster, P1 Arrow, a <laughs> Draven. Oh he had 2,700 gold to spend. He did buy something, and he's like, nah, sell that, Bloodthirster. Oh my, that's... He's, he's ready to go. That's not an item you see much of anymore. <laughs> you so often just see a death stance on Draven because you get the damage reduction, and then you're generally life-stealing for so much off the death stance. Uh, Bloodthirster is a lot of gold for not that many stats. Still makes you a little bit tankier. Maybe Draven is the champion for it. Ryu just Got gets out. Two. Lock with one. Just gonna wear right off. He couldn't find a second target. Hey, objective control. What else can he devour? Instantly taking out these wards too. Gotta remember the double bite. Pretty effective against that making your way around the map. They have actually been, been doing a good job of pushing their wards forward. It's kind of mirrored on both sides now around the red for vision. But around this mid now, P1 starts to focus. Good sapling from the left. Ben Scarin looking for the shot. Mike Young just gets to safety. Not enough room. And now Phoenix One's starting to move into TSM territory a little bit, getting that turret low. 
knowing Doublelift wants to get that solo turret gold up top. He's gonna get it, but Little Phoenix won't be able to get anything off of it. Will be the this will be a good time for TSM to clear that Rift Herald area. P1 will trade with the mid turret, nicely opening up the map. That's very, very healthy on the side of P1. Still 90% of its HP. It's gonna be hard for TSM to break that. I feel like it's gonna be a one big fight. TSM may just have a lane to themselves after that. That's the way it usually adapts for them. And yeah. It might be for the Rift Herald as well. I mean, we know the scaling, and I think the scaling on both of these teams is actually quite good. Uh, Cassiopeia, Cho'Gath, even Callista, I think, at least for mid-game scaling is great. Trying to go for the Rift Herald here while Phoenix One is in a recall pattern. Does Zik have package? He does. They could try and force a fight here. They don't have arrow quite yet. Zig slowly cruising in. They got a lot of time to pick that Rift Herald up. Looks like they make it out safely. Oh, package in from Ryu. He's gonna try to vault back towards Fence Garen. A nice bastion there from Biofrost, but they're not able to use the dazzle off of it, and they do take him down in the end. Flash and exhaust save. TSM just did not want to take the fight overall. Ryu does not care about your 5v4s. He just <laughs> jumps straight into five people, mostly for TSM, but they're in retreat mode anyway, so it helps to pick off Biofrost. Arrow in base, so TSM able to secure the Rift Herald, but Zig wants to fight. Now Kai slows down Sven Skarin. He's Zacto, so he bounces away. Lantern and a quick reset, and the nice cutoff there from Ryu. Missed stun from Tarek, and then Zig locks him down oh, man. before he can flash away. Yeah, I was gonna say he didn't have time to flash. So Zig now on this Maokai. Thought it was gonna be in the jungle to start things off as it usually is, but then goes top and Mike Young brings out the Shivana. Now these two are flying forward with a righteous glory on Zig. And Mike Young with that ultimate most of the time up as he's just around the map farming up this Devourer. So far, so good. Just waiting for Arrow to cash in here. He's gonna be a pretty big guy once he does. Yeah, if he dies, he loses half of his stacks. If he converts, it's a huge bump in power for Phoenix One. So a lot of peculiar picks for Phoenix One yep. here. Trying to catch TSM off guard a little bit. And so far, it's looking like it's working okay. We have to say though, TSM, was pretty close for about 10 minutes of game one and then still won the game yep. in 27. So strong team fighting, strong map play could still come through. They're not the type of team to panic in these situations. So they're working with uh, everybody just under 500 or 1,000 gold, so not too much to be bought here. Mike Young working to build up that HP in his Sterics or Charm's yep. Fist for now. Yep, probably going into Frozen Mallet, yeah. just like the build he has been practicing with. But Infernal Drake in 14 seconds, Phoenix One kills it really fast. They have an ultimate on Zig, but they do not have everyone here for the spawn of it, so TSM's gonna get control of the zone. Executioner's calling for Arrow here as his next item. And TSM has tremendous objective control as well. Callista Chogat almost one-shot the Drake, yeah. think about it. They're going on it right now, Phoenix One have to fight. They're gonna have to time it correctly. A lot go. of people miss between the Cho'Gath and the Callista. It gives time for the jungler to smite it out. P1 doesn't really have it. Zig throws down the ultimate, zones TSM for a moment, but they still get the Infernal. Bjergsen has to watch his HP. He's out of the fight. Cosmic Radiance means TSM needs to use this to walk out perfectly to the top side of the Dragon Pit, but P1 sees that as the entrance as it wears off. Svenskaren gonna be the first one going down. The focus on the kills, then on the Svenskaren blob. They They're gonna do that now. Mike Young KS is a blob and doesn't allow Arrow to cash in on his adoration. This is gonna be Ryu forward. There does it, is. it again. There's the adoration coming in for Mike Young, or for sorry, for Arrow. And now they're on the double lift. TSM stayed a little too long in the fight. And Biofrost goes down as well. All about getting a kill and moving on to the next the next target, I guess. Could have cost Ooh. them for not giving that kill over to Draven, but they end up cleaning up regardless. TSM no. got the Infernal Drake, but at great cost. 1,800 gold above double lifts in that one fight. Woo. Yeah, and he has about 2,000 to spend. That was a plus 920 adoration, if I saw correctly, at the end of that mm -hmm. team fight. Rift Herald has to be used to prevent the spawn. So yes, TSM got the Infernal Drake, but now Phoenix won 4,000 gold ahead in the game. See us again. Yeah, I mean, the Terracol just wasn't good. 
by TSM here. The I thought they were going to hug the done. wall and just leave. Exactly, because no one's doing damage to them right now. Yeah. They're not reducing anything. And as soon as the Terragolf is off, they're in range for the re-engage. So Phoenix One says, yes, please, we'll fight a team without a Terragolf. Stun lands onto Haunter. Here's where I wanted them to give the kill to Arrow, but they do not. They chase on. Ryu gets rid of the Blast Cone. And then they get to cash in onto Arrow's Draven and just continue to chase another clutch hook by X-Special down the stretch. <laughs> Ryu's making plays like you would see from an old Soraka on your team, giving you a buttload of armor as soon as you dive <laughs> in so you can bait. But he doesn't have that. He is just taking chunks, absorbing like a tank and getting out alive. Feeling good coming off the bench. Ryu is playing very well for the team here in game two. Looks like he's gonna get out of this situation. Package and Valkyrie to safety. A lot of pink wards here that P1 wants to move up and be able to protect in their inventory. Yeah, 5,000 gold now for Phoenix One. Looking to make this a third game. Has already gone. <laughs> it's just pen for the mortal reminder. I mean, yes, there are, are a lot of tanks already on TSM. Svenskaren and Haunter, Ninja Tabi, and building up. Uh, more armor, but no damage multipliers for Arrow. And the healing reduction is beneficial against his team. I mean, so much healing on TSM. Mm -hmm. So that, the, the, the Executioner's Calling portion makes sense, but boy, that's an early last whisper. I wonder what he was doing when he got the Executioner. So I was like, great, yeah, you recipe that in, get your other items. Yeah, it's like, nope. Static shift. You start going. it, you finish it. Just about 20 minutes in, it's the P1, the gold difference at 20. Usually quite below the average. Nine down there in position. Yeah. But this one, very, very good. Holding strong, but also pushing advantages. And that's what you need to see when you have a gold team. You don't just sit on it. Yeah, and it's a really big lead. They do kill Baron fast, don't have amazing Baron secure. So I think that's where they're going to be going next. And they're going to look to force a fight around it or just get it if TSM doesn't check. Time to go. No hesitation. Hello. There's another one. A momentary second of it. Just a bit. Tiny, tiny bit. And it's enough. They say, we don't want this just yet. Cosmic Radiance can be too much. The teleport is up for both Haunter and Zig as they're meeting each other down on that bot side. So now TSM kind of has an idea that we can work around if P1 wants Baron. Maybe they'll allow that to feel like a lull or sense of security and TSM can work against it. So many things come into play now that it's on the rift. Yeah, Mike Young ended up taking half his health and back spikes from the Baron, so they had to recall, stand there. give up control. Yeah, they're trying to sneak it from the from there, so. Still gonna be a struggle to find the right fight. Cassiopeia scales up very well towards the late game. And we know Phoenix One has struggled mightily ending game. They've actually had a lot of early game leads uh, during this struggling back half of the season yeah. for them. They are hungry. They really don't have the vision forward past this point. Maybe on their left side, but they're ready to take what would have been a blind engage there. The hook obviously giving momentary vision. They're ready to pull the trigger on something. They feel stronger. They're right to. Six to one on the board. They don't have to think too differently about it. And you got some spikes in the Triforce. Frozen Mallet as well. 3-0-3 Mike Young back on. A champion where he can be aggressive. But TSM says, we have a moment. And we are going to take a slight advantage. Gold from the mid turret. That's the Righteous Glory going down. A lockdown of the Cho'Gath. How much do they want that to star Zig? Almost down. Off the initiation as Ryu says, I have a flank, but that beautifully kind of disengages the fight that P1 Star did not want. Yeah, that was well played by TSM. They yeah, had a it was. 5,000 gold deficit, yet they just got mid priority, took a turret, and made the Maokai go back. Now they fight again. Maokai can't TP. Good jump over. The TP's coming in just above them. Home guards just after 20 minutes on. Oh. They could find himself a target. It's oh. going to be a sapling again. Cho'Gath so big, grabbing hooks left and right. Whoa, over the wall, the Spence Garen tries to bring the Cosmic Radiance in. If he can be the second one to be in that circle for the Terek Ultimate. Beautifully done, but it doesn't work. P1 says, get out of here. That's not gonna happen. Yeah, there's still no casualties, but 
Has TSM been pushed back enough? They don't have control over Baron. P1 turns. Now they're spotted. Does TSM go back in with no Terracol? Still have Cassio up and Shogath eats. Double bite and smite is still great from the Shivana. They're gonna go for it. Stolen. It's gonna be stolen by Sven Skarin. Right off the bat, a kill on New Expressor from Bjergsen. Hanser finalizes Ryu. And P1 are left wondering as they thought they had a complete upper hand on the Baron take. Phoenix One has good Baron damage, but not good Baron secure. Sven Skarin, Mike Young, smite fight. Sven Skarin wins it, and Phoenix One had just had a close 5v5 where both teams were low. They thought they'd be able to steal it away, but TSM had other ideas. Bjergsen still had ultimate, and that 6,000 lead Phoenix One had three minutes ago, it's gone. Completely gone. They didn't even lose too many members within the fight. It's just TSM organizing, adapting, and taking only what they need on the way in and on the way out. Here it is again. Yeah, the Barons at 5,000 health. Did they make the call to completely finish it? Shogath teleports in, has Flash Eat, and Sven Skarin has Smite. So everyone just bursted. It looked like I saw it last at 1,200, and then it was gone. Yeah. So Mike that never even crazy. gets his Smite off. That's the environment that 50-50s happen when you got Callistas, Chogaths, Double Smite, all in that pit. It is a toss-up sometimes. Yeah. They're smiting at 720 there, so something had to happen, obviously. Yeah, and also, if they don't smite early, yeah. Chogath feasts it for 1100, for 1202, actually, is how much it does right now. So the fact that Haunts are even teleported in in time just makes that a very questionable call by Phoenix One. Looks like they're trying to protect the bottom now, obviously working off the objectives being down. Ryu pushes top. Triforce is going to make this fantastic to actually answer if the minions can be held. Arrow still able to clear these out, but it, Draven has to be very close for that to happen, so TSM gets these turrets pretty easily. Yeah, Ryu doing his damage just put the map, but even when Phoenix 1 had that big gold lead, they weren't able to get the right type of team fights against TSM. They got to be really trying to figure out how to get the right fight. There's a cleanse Cassiopeia, and then a Terek that can ultimate if they end up going in. They have to find Hicks of some sort. A lot of that has to come down to X special landing a fresh hooker. Zig just finding someone on TSM who's not grouped up, but look at the way TSM is positioning. They'll yeah. put Zack in a bad spot, but he can alt away no matter what. And Bjergsen's not with his team, but he has cleanse, so they're positioning fairly smart. They're all just within range, too, of uh, I need help in a few seconds, especially when Haunter's teleport is down. Continue to play very, very safe. Monster though, six minion chomps and one champion devourer. So he's up to seven. A few more to go. Yeah. Get those champions. Hasn't grabbed the objectives he would want to grab on Chogath, That's so true. it's going to be hard for him to get absolutely massive this game. But Chogath's still pretty big with seven, especially once he gets level 16. He'll be getting more health per. Feast stack. This is when his music should get louder that he plays. It becomes global if you hit 11 <laughs> stacks. I would like that. Like the old Amumu laugh. <laughs> yeah. Top turret now for TSM. P1 trying to answer. A special could be the flank for a hook on the exit fight, but it looks like TSM only wants in for the moment. It's going to take all five members of P1 standing next to that turret to even deter TSM, and they're still threading shot through. Minions are pretty much equaled out in every other lane, so they can stay and have fun here for a while. Yeah, but they still have regained control of this game, even if they haven't mm -hmm. regained control of the gold lead. They must feel like they're ahead right now. Ocean Drake, Infernal Drake, maybe actually tilting the stats in their favor. Miasma also prevents the engage, even if Mike Gun wants to flank. Here nice we go. Up. Good silence. The hook already came out, though. A little too close for Haunter. Cosmic Radiant saving his life, and he will get out alive. No kill there. Trying to get into the fight is Mike Young. The ultimate is down as he goes dragon form. They get bounced out of the fight, so they can't chase TSM. Spence Karen with the Broman for the rest of his team to keep them alive. Takes one for the team, but that's <laughs> still a three for O oh for Phoenix One. They find a really good fight there. TSM overstays the turret, and the hook comes through from X Special right here. Hunter has turret aggro, hooks him in turret aggro, and yes, the invulnerability stops him from dying, but Doublet goes and face checks a Draven. Gets blown up, overconfident from the Terrac ultimate, and 
definitely a just happy moment there from Trent Scaring, but it's not enough. This is Phoenix One taking control back. What a hold there by P1. As I hold, the turret went down, but they were able to fight back and get TSM as they breadcrumb their way out of there. Quicksilver Sash now for Arrow along with his zeal, kind of edging a bit more of the damage multipliers in there. And it looks like we could get the Infinity Edge from Ryu actually quite soon here, the 800 for the Critical Cloak and then the finishing price, and he will be very strong. Yeah, Arrow should be able to complete that seal item into something more substantial on his next back if he chooses to. No. Boom, rapid fire. Whoa, cannon. never mind, he's got it. Long range axes. Yep, and Ryu actually has a thousand gold, so he's close to the Infinity Edge. That fight for them was a big, big surge that they were waiting for, but they cleaned the turrets up already, so now they gotta move the wards up and get themselves into position to make the plays happen again. One minute on the Baron and one on Ocean Drake before we actually yeah. see the Elder. And as we've seen time and time again, gold beads don't win you games. Objective control yes. with gold beads win you games. And Phoenix One has gotten the gold bead part down, but not the objective control. They gave away a 6,000 gold lead with that last Baron force. It was stolen away and they lost the fight. Ocean Drake up in 35 seconds, Baron in 50. Vision control, finding smart fights around the objectives, and then taking up the objectives. It needs to be the name of the game for Phoenix One, but that is very hard to do against this TSM team. Man, he's big. Pawns are taking up the entire screen, and they're looking at him, and they don't see Svens Karen coming out of the clouds from over his shoulder. Biofrost gets dropped immediately. God. Cosmic Radiance goes off on the other side, but it didn't happen soon enough. That's the timing that can be very tricky. Now they're actually going after the tankiest person. Hauntzer loses some of his stacks. A double kill for Ryu. And it looks like P1 is turning the heat up. Triple kill for Ryu on the Corky. Finally oh. goes down as he is shut down. Oh, double and double lift coming up with a triple. Looking for the Quadra. He's going to be getting out of Special. If he can travel in forward, he's got the distance. Oh. He's got the HP. A red buff would lock it in, but double lift completely saved. TSM. Woo, this is turning into a bloodbath. Doublelift gets his first three kills of the game in the backside of that fight. Hurricane, Blade of the Ruined King, Lifesteal, Callista, tank right there at the end. Thought it was Lucian for a second. But it's still a four for four, so that's that fight's a wash overall until they collide again. Infinity Edge has been completed onto Ryu. BF Sword has been built for Arrow. Doublelift is probably going to be able to pick up the Ocean Drake on the backside if he chooses. What a fight. I actually have to see how that started to turn around. Here it is again. Yeah, so Barfrost is Arden Sensor Terror. I think it's the best item for him, but you yep. have to be a little bit careful. So he goes in, gets rooted, tries to ult, and they blow him up. Doesn't get the ult to go off on himself, but now it becomes a 4v5. Hansa goes for the flash, Gargoyle, Stoneplate, and Amanda Ryu nearly kills him. But the rest of TSM can't necessarily follow up, and now it's about Bjergsen and Doublelift versus the world with Peel. Bjergsen goes down early, but Doublelift just gets enough shots in, flashes away from Zig, oh. and life steals off the minions at the end. So close to turning. And now TSM is on Baron, going for the rush. Pick goes down, the smite, the bite, and that is going to be one of the objectives. For Hauntzer, he gets a little bit bigger. Remember, he lost stacks on that last one, but TSM are now on a tear, and that's exactly what they needed. Double of 8,200 damage in the fight. Just massive, doing the work of two carries in that fight. After the fight, looks like Ryu ran towards a blue buff. That's one of the things that happens when you're not the primary mid laner for your team and you're subbed and you don't have the same level of cohesion. TSM takes advantage of it. They then Secured the Baron from 3K with Callista and Chomp from Cho'Gath. Now they push the Baron. This is a... The Baron minions are incredibly tough for P1 to even clear. It's Arrow's job. Ryu can fire some to the back side. And is able to clear some of the caster minions and TSM move back here. They have minions on the bot. And Ocean Drake is up as well before the Elder if they even want to get it as they just rotate back and forth. Here keeping the pressure on. It looks like they aren't going to leave this side of the map for a bit. Yeah, and if that big one from Ryu is any indication, this game is definitely not decided yet. Phoenix One still has a gold lead. TSM still yet to crack an inhibitor turret, and Ryu's going to hurt no matter what. It's very hard for Doublelift to even get off damage when he's dealing with Corky and Draven in fights. 
Cosmic Radiance. No, nope, not pulled out and just yet. Beautiful all. Bouncing two out. Spence Garen beautifully taking two members of P1 out. Special Insight go down immediately to the hands of Haunter. Now they're on the inhibitor turret. And TSM was just waiting so patiently. Good things come to those who are patient. They get the inhibitor turret in the mid lane and the inhib as they move towards top side. They're a little unhealthy. They may head home first. That play right there is why TSM is still prioritizing something. Coming back in, though. See the damage Ryu does. He says kiss. Ryu and Arrow, and they're going to be dropping them. Sven Skaren taking so many shots. Ryu can't get him to fall. They're able to drop Mike Young as well as Biofrost goes down valiantly. For the team, they are going to be able to drop Ryu. That's the ace on P1. TSM's in the base. Two minutes after it was anyone's game, it's TSM's game. Still only a one and a half thousand gold lead, but with those death timers, they might be able to push to end. The Barons, as we said before, once they saw P1 do it, they said, this is our way to find it back in. We'll continue to run that. And they ran P1 at Baron twice. The Nexus turrets now in the favor of TSM is big and special. Do everything they can to stop it. 18 seconds and 16 on the closest members of P1. Zig says, walk this way. You don't want the Nexus, but TSM does not care. They want the win, and they want to push up in the standings. TSM take down P1, two to zero.